Today's lesson is about a girl named Hadassah. What the heck? Mm -hmm. You see, when the Israelites were held captive, they were taken to a foreign country. Now, in that country that they were taken to, they didn't speak the language that the children of Israel spoke. The children of Israel spoke Hebrew. In Babylon, the country that they were taken to, they spoke a different language. And then another kingdom conquered Babylon, and it became the kingdom of the Persians. Now in Persia today, that's called Iran, they speak a language called Farsi. Let me ask you this. Raise your hand if you speak English. Raise, okay, put your hands down. Raise your hand if you speak a language other than English. What do you speak? What language do you speak? So no. If I say, uh, That's not me. You know that? What does that mean? Bonjour. Hello. That's called French. I know. I learned wow. French when I was in school. What? So I, I can speak a little of the language that you guys speak. Oh, that's cheap. Bien. Bueno, bueno, bien. Bon. Bonjour. All right, guys. Yes. Uh, J'ai oublié uh, le plus part de la langue. What, what did I say? What did I say? Did you, did you understand what I said? No, I, you had no idea what I said, right? What I said was I've forgotten most of it. I've forgotten most of the language. It's been over 40 years. It's been over 40 years since I, since I took French. But I've, I've been to France several times. Very old. All right, somebody else had their hands up. Who else? What language do you speak? Marshallese. Okay. So we've got French. We've got Marshallese. Spanish. Live off your hand, please. What else? You got another one? Chukis. Okay. Spanish. Spanish. Okay. Parlez-vous espagnol? Par, 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 Russian, Mandarin, okay. I got English, I got French, I got Spanish, I got German. I can speak a little. I can speak a little bit of four languages. All right. Okay, hands down. Hands up. The reason I'm asking all this is because what happened is, you see, they spoke Hebrew, and this young woman, her name was Hadassah. That was her Hebrew name, was Hadassah. That's your sister's name. There's, it's, there's a reason why that's your sister's name. It's no accident. Because your mom knew that there was a girl in the Bible whose name was Hadassah. You see, because she was in another land, or in another country, the country was called Persia, and there her name would have been Esther. So if you see a girl named Esther, and you see a girl named Hadassah, that's the same name. It's the same name. Just like if you see a boy named Juan, and you see a boy named John, and you see a boy named Ian, 
And you see a boy named Ivan? And you see a boy named Jean? It's all the same name, just different languages. And so Hadassah and Esther are the same name, but different languages. So the Bible tells us that her name was Hadassah, but they called her Esther because that was the language where they lived. When Esther was really young, her mom and her dad died. Both her mom and her dad died. She was an orphan. And so her uncle, Mordecai, looked after her and he raised her. He was old enough, and she was she was like a daughter to him. And he raised her to be a good young lady. And one day, the king of Persia, he had this uh, what was it? it? It was a he was throwing a party. And he said, I want my queen to come. She is very beautiful. And I want her to come and parade before all the men so I can show everybody what a beautiful wife I have. And so he said to his queen, her name was Vashti, and he said, I want you to come into the throne room because I want to show you off. I want to show everybody how beautiful you are. And you know what the queen said? That's exactly what she said. She said, no, I ain't coming. Now, let me ask you this. Has any of you had your parents tell you to do something and you said no? No, snap you. It doesn't turn out very well, does it? It doesn't turn out very well. Did it did it turn out well for you? Did it turn out well for you? Did it turn out well for you? Did it, does it turn out well for you to say no to your parents? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It doesn't turn out well. And it didn't turn out well for Vashti, guys. Keep your hands off each other. It didn't turn out well for Vashti either. He got so angry. He said, She's not going to be my queen anymore. <gasps> now she was lucky because he could have had her killed just for saying no. Because you don't say no to the king. Instead, he just had her banished. That is, she had to leave him. She was no longer able to be the queen. Well, after a while, he started thinking about Vashti. He thought, man, I wish I had a queen. And the uh, all of his advisors said, you know what? Why don't we find you a young woman who can be your queen? And so you know what they decided to have? Who wants to guess? What do you think they decided to have? More than just that. Okay, they wanted to find a queen for the king. So they decided they're going to have an event. And can you guess what that event might have been? I am a party. Kind of, I guess. I thought it was their hand. Party? Not quite. No. They decided they were going to have a beauty contest. What the heck? Do it. Did you know that there is, in the Bible, you will find a beauty contest? They had a beauty contest back then. Now, it's not what you think here, you know, where they get all the TV cameras. Oh. I'm going to abuse my water bottle this week. And you got the TV cameras rolling, and there's, the and all the women are, all the women are walking by. Oh, I make a terrible woman, don't I? Yes. Yeah, Kaya's Kai, Kai going, really Kaya's going really dated. Oh. Really? Because they didn't have cameras back then. They didn't have TV back then. But what they did was they put out word all over the kingdom. All the beautiful women come 
and you're going to have a chance to see the next queen. And women came from all parts of the kingdom. Now, in the city where the king lived, that's where Mordecai lived. And Mordecai lived there with his niece, and what was her name? Or her Persian name would have been? Esther. Esther. Okay, well, we will refer to her as Esther. But I just wanted you to know that there, her name is actually, her, her uh, Jewish name was actually Hadassah. But <clears throat> Mordecai lived in the same city. Now, let me back up a second. Mordecai lived in the same city as the palace. One night he heard a couple guys that were angry with the king, and they were discussing, we're going to kill the king. And Mordecai reported it. And they did an investigation, and they found out the guys were plotting evil against the king. And the king had him taken care of. But Mordecai said to his niece, Esther, you go ahead, and you try to be the queen. Now, you do not tell anybody who you are. You do not tell anybody that you're an Israelite. Keep that quiet. And so all the women came, and it took a long time. It took many months for them to figure out. And when Esther came before the king, he thought she was beautiful. What did I just say? Okay, because I'm seeing a lot of activity, a lot of people looking around. I need you to look up here. I ain't the prettiest thing to look at for you. You have to look at me.
or not Daniel, I'm sorry, is in the book of Daniel. But Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, got into trouble. Why? Is that what you were going to say? Uh, they were bound down to a different idol. idol. No, they weren't bound down. They gave them down to God said, you do not bow down to anybody except for God. So why would this be a problem first? Now, who, who do you think this would be a problem for then if the Haman wanted everybody to bow down to him? God. It would be a problem for God, but it would also be a problem for God's people. Who remembers who God's people were? Israelites. Israelites. And who was an Israelite? Who, who in this in this uh, book was an Israelite? You're going to put your hand up. You got an idea? Yes, no, maybe so. Cat got your tongue. Come see, come see. Esther. Esther? Except Esther didn't go out of the palace, so she didn't really encounter Haman. Mm. Esther's uncle. Esther's uncle, his name was mm. Mordecai. Mordecai. Because Mordecai was an Israelite, he was not supposed to bow down to other people. He only bowed down to God. And so when Haman wanted everybody to bow down, Mordecai didn't. And that made Haman angry. Haman became very angry. And Haman decided, you know what? I am so angry at Mordecai because Mordecai is an Israelite. And Israelites are not supposed to bow down to people, so they're not going to bow down to me. So I'm not, I'm going to do away with Mordecai. And he had a gallows built in his backyard. Does anybody know what a gallows is? Ray, do you know what a gallows is? Oh, I thought you had your hand up there. Exactly. It's a platform to hang people, to kill people. He had one built for Mordecai. Like to execute somebody? To execute somebody. A trap? And he decided, you know what? I'm not just going to stop with Mordecai. I want to get rid of all the Israelites in the kingdom everywhere. Now, Mordecai got wind of what was going on. And he said to Esther, Esther, you need to do something. You need to go see the king. Because the king gave him permission to do this. And they set a date on which this would happen. That everybody would attack the Israelites throughout the whole kingdom. And kill them. And Mordecai said, we're in trouble, Esther. You need to do something. Esther said, uh, the king hasn't called me. You know what the penalty is if you go into the throne room and the king hasn't called you? You know what the penalty is for doing that? Execution. Death. Except if you show up unannounced in the king's throne room, you're supposed to die unless he finds favor in you and he holds out his golden scepter if he holds out his golden scepter to you, pretend this is gold, pretend it's a scepter, that means the king has found favor with you and you're not going to die. Esther said back to Mordecai, look, the king hasn't called me for over a month. If I go in, I'm going to die. And Mordecai said back to her, he said, if you think you're going to escape this, think again. They're going to find out who you are. It could be that God brought you to the kingdom. God made you the queen just for this reason, to save your people. And Esther said, okay. I want you to...
fast and pray. I want you to fast and pray for three days. And I, I'm going to fast and pray, and my maidens are going to fast and pray with me. And then I'm going to go into the king's throne room unannounced, and if I die, I die. And so she did. And she showed up in the king's throne room, and he saw her there. And when he saw her, his heart melted. Oh, there's my beautiful queen. And he held out to her the golden scepter. And then he said, Esther, well, what do you wish? She said, King, I'm going to prepare a meal. I'm going to prepare a feast tonight. And I want you to come. And I want Haman to come. And then I'll tell you what that is. Now Haman walked out of there. He heard all this. And he walks out of there. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm bad. I'm bad. And he went home and he told. He went home to tell his family. You see, Haman. Haman was a bragger. You know what a bragger is? You guys know what a bragger is? They're telling you about all the great things they do. I'm the greatest. Haman was that kind of a person. He went home to tell his people, to tell his family what a great man he was. Then he saw Mordecai. Mordecai didn't bow down to him. He said, you know what? I'm going to forget about this one time. And he went home and told Let me tell you. He called all his friends together. He said, let me tell you how great I am. Queen Esther invited the king to a feast that she herself was going to prepare. And nobody else has been invited except yours truly. Yep. But you know what? They said, Mordecai still bothers me. And his family told him, you know what? You ought to go ask the king to for permission to do something about it, go hang them now, and then you can go to your feast. He said, that's a good idea. And he went into the king. Okay. Oh, hey, I got a favor to ask for you. And the king said, you know what, Haman? You see, that night, he couldn't sleep. And so they, he said, you know what? I need to sleep. Why don't you guys go, go down to the library and get the records for me and read me the records. You know that's going to get on the cover. If you ever want to sleep, have somebody read you official records. They are so boring. They will put you to sleep. And as they were reading him the official records, they came across the plot that Mordecai had Foiled. And the king said, what, what was done for him? Nothing. Nothing's been done for him. All of a sudden, it came that knock at the door. Who is it? It's Haman. Haman, come in, come in, come in. Hey, listen. Haman, king, I have a favorite. No, wait, wait. Listen, Haman, let me ask you something. What would you do what should be done for a man that the king wants to honor? Now Haman, being the bragger he is, he thought, well, who do you think the king would want to honor more than me? So he said, what you need to do, king, is get one of the horses that you ride. Get one of the royal robes that you have worn and put it on the man and have him run around the city and say, this is what will be done to the man that the king delights to honor. Because Haman's thinking, I'm that guy. I'm going to get to ride on the king's horse, and I'm going to get to wear the king's robes, and everybody's going to look at me and say, this is the man that the king wants to 
honor. And the king said to him, great idea. Go find Mordecai and do that for him. You go ahead and lead him around the city. But, 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 but. Oh, uh, what were you going to ask me? Uh, 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 never mind. Never mind. And so he had to do that. He had to lead Mordecai around the city in the, on the king's horse, wearing the king's robes, and say, this is the man that the king delights to honor. Now, what are the odds that Mordecai, that uh, Haman is going to get his request to have Mordecai killed? Not too good, is it? Not too good. He went home and he told his family what happened. They said, oh, Haman, you're in trouble now. You know, God, God's doing this to you. And if you, if God's doing this to you with Mordecai, you're not going to stand before Mordecai. You're going to fall. And Haman said, oh, what are we going to do? And they came to invite him to the, to the dinner. He goes to the dinner. And the king says to Esther, what's your request? She says, have him come back. Both of you come back again tomorrow night. Comes back tomorrow night. Okay, queen, what's your request? And she dropped the hammer. She said, king, I and my people have been committed to destruction. We are going to be destroyed. We are going to be wiped off the face of the earth and I beg you for my life and I beg you for the life of my people and the king got angry he said who would do that and she pointed at Mordecai or Mordecai she pointed at Haman rather and she said it's Haman the king was so angry he got up from the table and he walked out of the room, leaving just Esther and Haman in the room together. Haman knew he was in trouble, so he was going to beg for his life. And he fell down on his knees. He fell down on his knees to plead for his life. He wanted to plead for his life to Esther. And they came in. People, the king came in, and he found Haman with Esther, and got the wrong idea. Now he really got angry. And they led Haman away. And someone said, "You know, he built this gallows to hang Mordecai on." And the king said, "Perfect, hang Haman on it." But you see, that still didn't solve the problem. You see, because in that kingdom, once a law was made, the law could not be changed. And so Esther and her people were still sold to destruction. And so once again, she came in before the king. This time her request is, please allow us to fight back. And the king said, you have your wish. Why did God put that story into the Bible? Number one, there are people that will not like you. Just because you're a Christian, there are people that will not like you. There are people around the world right now, they are going door to door, knocking on doors. Afghanistan. Afghanistan is one of the places. Not just Afghanistan. But they're going house to house to find Christians. And if they find Christians, they're going to kill them. Men, women, and children. There are people that hate you because you're a Christian. Esther was in that situation. But Esther was not afraid. Esther stood strong. Esther trusted in God. Now when that day came... For the people to attack the Israelites, the Israelites were prepared. 
and they were better prepared than the people that attacked them. And instead of the uh, Israelites being killed, the people that tried to kill them were killed instead. And the Israelites became, well, they, they became very prosperous. And actually the position that Haman was in, Mordecai got that position. God honors those who follow his laws. God honors those who obey him. You don't have to be afraid of anybody. Listen up, because I don't think I don't think you guys got this. You don't have to be afraid of anybody. Because God will fight for you. God will fight for you. He will fight for you. God will make sure that he protects you. Always. You don't have to be afraid of anything. God was with Esther. And God will be with you. Always. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this lesson. Lord, may we take courage in the story of what you did for Esther. Lord, destruction was determined for them. But you turned it into a time of victory. Lord, no matter what happens to us, we trust in you. And we're going to stand with you and we're going to be obedient to you. Because by your word, you have already said that you will take care of us. And we know that you're going to take whatever happens to us and you're going to turn it into a victory. And we're going to come out on the better end of it. We thank you because you care for us. We thank you because you love us. And we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.